Well, to me, I think the way to dissolve the unforgiveness and to, and to come into this full experience where you see everyone as yourself and like that simultaneous merge you were talking about, it, it is a purification that's going on. You know, we've talked about chemistry and alchemy and the transformation that's, that's coming. And it's, it's just, in the end, I would say it's just a total purification. Um, it's symbolized in, in A Course of Miracles workbook lesson. My, uh, my mind holds only what I think with God. And I think a stepping stone is kind of coming towards that a little bit is I can be hurt by nothing but my thoughts. Uh, again, you can see how I can be hurt by nothing but, but my thoughts is another version of all illness is mental illness. You can start to see that it's just using different phraseology to come to that same thing, that it's all mental, um, that it's all mind. What would be the benefit of that is that, that mind is one, mind is singular, mind is unified, and there's no duality in mind. Um, to perceive negativity, attack, whatever, you have to have two. And that two could be whatever. It could even be an inner world and an outer world. A lot of times people talk about the, the inner world of their consciousness and then the outer world that they perceive. And that's what this transformation is kind of mental alchemy that's, that's occurring is is starting to show us that there really is no world apart from what we think. That even when we, we meet some people that we, we can seem to talk freely and share ideas and there's, a, there's like a big it's a synergy and an excitement and you feel like after you've talked to this person you feel energized. You feel like, woo, I, we were both lifted up and t taken up higher there. And then there seem to be other encounters where it's like it's a different kind of a belief system. It's a different kind of thought system. You know, there's it's more negativity or more closed-mindedness or whatever. But in the end, it can't really be that there are these different levels of people and different levels of, of ideas out there. It has to be during this purge or this, you know, purification that it all comes together as one. So for me, that was the thing of, of surrendering just to say, I'll go wherever you want me to go. I'll do what you want me to do. I will step back. You lead the way. You show me. Um, I'm not going to try to freeze down an identity into anything that is like static. I want to just continually go through an evolution of consciousness where I'm just so unattached and so open to whatever comes my way that in the end I, I, I reach a state where I, I see that I cannot judge anything, I, I, that I never could judge anything, that I never did know my best interest. You know, this humble state of just pure openness, open-mindedness. And so it, it, there's a lot of ideas that get you know, left along the way, even the idea of kind of uh, positive energy and negative energy, you know, you can start to see there's so much duality in, in everything that we have believed in. And we have to truly, like Buddha said, empty the mind of everything that we think we think and think we know and, and come into that state of pure emptiness and innocence. Uh, recently, I was listening to the, the Chinese translator of A Course in Miracles, and she said, I mean, at the beginning they didn't get it into mainland China, they got it over to Taiwan, and sh she did a lot of her work in Taiwan there, and she said at first it kind of caught fire as kind of this catchy new, new age teaching and philosophy, you know, and it was, was started to become popular that way and so forth. And then occasionally some Buddhists would trickle in and start picking up the book and working with it a bit. And she noticed over time, over the years, that, that the ones that kind of came in from like a new age perspective, they were like flesh in the pan. They, they quickly let it go and it was the, the Buddhists that were the long-term course students 
the other ones all faded away. And I thought, how beautiful, you know, this ancient tradition of non-dualism, of, of emptying the mind, uh, this deep, rich spiritual tradition there. They, ca they came into it very slowly, <laughs> like, hmm, what's this? And, and then they started working, and then they hung with it. And I think that's the way that, it, that this kind of alchemy, this transformation goes. We have to have a lot of steadfastness, a lot of persistence, a lot of devotion to truly hang with it. And then pop, <laughs> it just seems like we reach a, a crescendo, we reach a threshold or something, and it's just like wham, it just boink, you know, it's just like aha, you know, it just comes at us, eureka. It's like ah, 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 you know, just the simplicity of it just dawns, the glee, the joy, the happiness. And uh, at that point, you know, the the practice, the process, all the things that seem to come before are just kind of swallowed up, you know, in it. And so to me, that's that's the most important thing. It's just like this deep desire and willingness to have that experience. And that seems to be the thing that, that really fuels the purification, you know, that that our desire to be still and know God, you know, ultimately wins out, we could say, because it's the most natural experience that could ever be. And those things, I mean, I, I have so many parables of, of meeting people along the way that the world would describe as the, the most dark or describe as the most judgmental ones, but it would be more like, you know, just an awareness for me that everything is a reflection of my, my mind. So I would just stay there and sit there and, and really be there, almost like searching, searching, like, I know you're in there. <laughs> I know you're in there, and I'm not leaving till I see, see you, <laughs> you know. And, and one time I was in Chicago, and... I did this course gathering, and uh, the woman who had invited me, her husband was not into the course, and it was his uh, like real estate office, and um, and he was there the whole time. But after he left, you know, he was he went through all of his darkness and his negativity. But I just stayed with him, stayed with him, and and later the the uh, the woman told my my friend who was traveling with me who they had gone into another uh, building but that that his that his stereotype or nickname he, they called him Archie Bunker uh, <laughs> so it was like I was I was out in a room with for three hours with Archie Bunker and he was he was just telling me you know which races should be exterminated and you know I mean all that kind of stuff and I just sat there though in presence pure presence for about three hours and then after that, near the very end, it just turned around where, you know, he started to say, well, I don't know, maybe there is like a divine intelligence behind it all. And, and, and the spirit started just moving through him. I was like, oh my God, Archie, <laughs> even Archie Bunker can channel the spirit. If it's just your desire, you know, I just had the desire to stay there and to see the innocence. And I had such a strong desire for that that I had no intention whatsoever to go anywhere. I could just sit there beautifully in presence. I, I did a lot of listening. <laughs> there wasn't a lot to speak, but at the end, you know, it did pop through. And it was this ah, this feeling like, of course, the innocence has to break through. You know, the, the darkness cannot hide the light. You know, the light, you know, is just perfect love cast out fear and it's just a matter of divine reality and divine fact and so you know to me that's that's what this is about we really hang in with that determination and uh, nothing can stop us from experiencing that <laughs>